thank you all so much for coming out. I know the weather was not cooperative, um, but I appreciate your support. My name's Laura Fallon. I'm a member of the Northampton School Committee. Um, and before we start, I do want to acknowledge and thank um, Anastasia Werlinis from uh, the Amherst School Committee and Peter Demling, the, also from the Amherst School Committee, for helping to organize today. And now it's my pleasure to introduce the mayor of Northampton and chair of the Northampton School Committee, uh, David Markowitz. You forgot tired Red Sox fan, too. Um, kind of working on a little sleep, but thank you. Um, my name is David Narkowitz, mayor of the city of Northampton, chair of the Northampton School Committee, and it's great to be with so many of our colleagues in municipal and state government um, who are here uh, as part of this rally. Now it's a press conference, um, specifically related to the proposed expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. Um, this would be the third attempt um, uh, to try to expand this school. Many of us have opposed it. Many of the schools in this area have, exp have opposed it um, on a number of different levels. Um, first and foremost, uh, the school is, to my knowledge, not at capacity, and not anywhere close to capacity. Um, secondly, it, uh, it does not really reflect the, um, the makeup of the communities that send students to it. It does not reflect the makeup of uh, Northampton Public Schools and other area schools in terms of being a school that's open to uh, children from every background, whether that's uh, low income, whether it's English language learners, whether it's special education. Um, and we've got a lot of fact sheets and you'll hear from others who are gonna talk about uh, this disparity. Um, so on that sort of micro level, I am, I am opposed to this and our school committee opposes it. But on a more macro level, the fact that we're talking about uh, expanding charter schools at a time when we know we have a fundamentally flawed, broken, and unfair charter school funding system um, that is completely unfair uh, to local school districts. But just focusing a little bit on uh, Northampton Public Schools, since the inception of charter schools 24 years ago, uh, the Northampton city of Northampton has had t over $27 million redirected uh, to charter schools. In the last five years, almost $11 million taken right off the top um, of our budgets. Um, in this current fiscal year, um, we will be losing $2.7 million uh, from our budget, um, and that will be essentially 200 students um, spread across six schools and 13 grade levels. Um, so we are, we are being asked year after year to absorb these massive revenue losses, um, and it's impossible to do. Compounding that, there is a statutory formula to reimburse cities and towns uh, to mitigate the impacts of the loss of those students. That has been never fully funded by the legislature, um, except maybe one year when they were trying to expand charters, I think. Um, but, uh, but currently, uh, DESE estimates that that line item should be funded at about $172 million. That would be to provide the phased-in mitigation over five years to schools so that when a child who leaves a classroom and takes you know, twelve dollars to $14,000 worth of uh, tuition out of that classroom, that we can't replace that money. We still have to provide that classroom, provide that teacher. It was designed to mitigate that. The legislature has not fully funded that. Um, so in terms of Northampton, uh, we were shorted almost a million dollars over the last five years in mitigation funds that we are entitled to receive but have not received. So, um, and in terms of how they're funded just generally, um, the, we try to backfill our budget. We try to um, increase our appropriation spending to make up for the loss. In 2013, Northampton adopted a $2.5 million override um, to try to augment the loss of funds. Well, the, the insidious piece of this is that the formula that determines charter school tuitions counts that override and actually sends a portion of that override to charter schools as part of the tuition. So it's sort of a cycle you cannot get out of. So, so in terms of the fundamental unfairness of uh, the specific charter school that we're talking about today and the fact that they do not represent the diversity of the communities they serve and the larger funding issues. We should not be talking about expanding this or any other charter school in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts unless and until we have addressed the fundamental issues regarding not only charter school funding but our entire Chapter 70 funding program. 
um, which again uh, is the same pot of money, frankly. So we're basically being pitted against each other. Um, schools and parents are being pitted against each other, chasing the same crumbs um, that our governor and our legislature are giving us. So. I'm proud to stand with you in solidarity on this issue. I'm proud that our school committee and our city council um, have been and remain in solidarity in opposing this expansion. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing my colleagues who are going to be speaking with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Narkowitz. Um, next up, we have Denise Hurst of the Springfield School Committee. Um, Denise is also chair of the Minority Caucus for the Massachusetts Association of School Committee Members. Before I begin my, my prepared remarks, thank you, Mayor Narkowitz, and thank you, Laura, and all of those, Anastasia, who helped to put this rally together or this press conference together to raise awareness around this very important issue that is affecting not only um, our school districts here in the Western Mass, but all across the Commonwealth. So good morning, thank you all for being here. Your presence today, especially during this weather, is a testament to how much you care about your community, especially the children and your local public school districts. My name is Denise Hurst and I'm a school committee member in the city of Springfield. I am also a Springfield Public School graduate and a mother, a proud mother, of a child who attends one of our underperforming schools in our district. So I come to you today wearing very or a variety of hats, um, but with one main concern, and I think it's a concern that we all share, which is it just isn't fair, that this is not equity. All the children are entitled to a quality education, irrespective of their race, ethnicity, abilities, and socioeconomic status. Springfield Public Schools, like many other districts, are dedicated to and making great progress at educating all of its children. Every day, we experience incredible successes in our district. However, there are still incredible challenges. We constantly find ourselves having to do more with less which is a result of a variety of factors that I'm sure we could all name. However, there is one thing that's for sure, one thing that can be quantified, and that is the inadequate reimbursement of charter school funding. The possibility of a charter expansion is devastating and will sow long-term repercussions for not just Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, Amherst, but for our entire region and ultimately our Commonwealth. We can't continue to operate with enormous gaps in funding and leave behind those with the greatest needs and believe that it will not have a profound effect on all of our futures, because it will. It will affect our public safety, our workforce, our economic development, and in essence, our quality of life. This year, Springfield Public Schools sent almost $50 million of our foundation budget to charter schools. And if this expansion occurs, my district alone, Springfield, will stand to lose an additional $850,000 annually. Rallying today or being here today is just a start, but it won't necessarily stop the expansion. So I come to you not just to, to, to express to you how devastating this can be and will be to a city like Springfield, Holyoke, Northampton, or Amherst, but to say to you that this is just the start and that when you leave here today, you need to make sure that not only are you informing others, but that you're writing to your commissioner, you're calling, you're emailing your commissioner or the Department of Early Ed, DESI, <laughs> um, and that you're taking to, um, to ensuring that people are understanding how devastating this can be, and that all students in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts are deserving of a fair, quality education. Thank you very much for your partnership. Thank you, Denise Hurst. Um, next, I'd like to welcome Heather Sheldon. She's a parent representative um, from the Amherst Public School. Hi, my name is Heather Sheldon, and this is my daughter, Anna. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Anna's older sister, Lily, was diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum when she was three years old. 
Lily is now a second grader at Fort River, a public elementary school in Amherst. I would like to share with you a note that I wrote about Lily's special education teacher, Megan, last spring. Megan Carroll is truly a star to special education. In her role as teacher in the Ames program at Fort River, she is changing lives and making futures brighter. I assume for all of her students, but I know so for my daughter. My daughter looks forward to school every day. This is an incredible gift that Megan has given to my child and to my family. The intensely social and sometimes unpredictable environment of school could very well have become a barrier to my child's keen interest in learning. But Megan has been able to craft her school days so that school is a magical place where there is new discoveries, always something interesting to learn, and things to look forward to every day. Making this happen for a child who doesn't readily fit into the curriculum and systems that are designed to fit most, but not all, kids takes insight, creativity, and dedication. Megan has these qualities and more in spades. I feel an enormous debt of gratitude to Megan because I fully trust her and her team to look out for what is best for my child. Every school day, I send my daughter to her with confidence that she will be treated with compassion and understanding, no matter how challenging her behaviors become. Megan and her team in the Ames program are able to respond professionally in moments of crisis. They continually reevaluate best responses, but also they continually keep the big picture in mind and look for ways, big and small, to keep my child regulated and resilient so these trying moments are ever growing fewer. Megan has gone above and beyond by helping us coordinate strategies that bridge home and school. She has helped us think through. Okay, when I'm done. Um, she has helped us think through the appropriateness of group activities outside of school. She really cares that my daughter be exposed to environments and be supported in them, where she can be her best self. My daughter's confidence and calm have grown every day that Megan has been looking out for her. I am grateful that Lily is able to attend a school where she, excuse me, where she has peers that can match her both intellectually and in her challenges. All students deserve this. I also appreciate that her peers have opportunities to practice skills of acceptance while they are young so that when Lily enters the world as a quirky adult, she'll move through a community where she is better understood. Lily is among the 20% of students in the Amherst schools who participate in our outstanding integrated special education programming. By comparison, the Chinese Immersion Charter School accommodates just 5.9% of students with dif differing needs. The charter school should demonstrate that it serves all students on par with its regional public schools before it should be allowed to, before it should be allowed to expand. Thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to say I like that you all watch my mom together in one group, in one place. Thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, next up, we have Mindy Dom. Uh, she is the Democratic nominee for State Representative, 3rd Hampshire. Thank you very much. I'm Mindy Dom. I'm the Democratic nominee for State Rep for 3rd Hampshire, which includes Amherst, Pelham, and one precinct of Granby. And those are three communities that are united in their opposition to the application of the um, Charter Emer Chinese Immersion Charter School. I'm really pleased to be here. I made some prepared remarks so that I could stay on topic and not delay. But I also want to thank Denise um, for sharing Springfield's experience with those of us who live in this part of the valley. Often there's a divide between us and I'm hopeful that this particular issue will also sort of bring in a new era of working together. And it's stunning to me how much money is coming out of the Springfield budget. We often think in this part of the valley that we're being the most impacted by something. And when you hear about $850,000 a year coming out of a budget that's already depleted, that's already identified as at risk and vulnerable, it's painful for me. So I'm grateful for you for sharing that. And Heather, I am grateful for your story, sharing your story and your experience, um, especially because it concerns the school district that I'm 
uh, represent, but also that my kids went to. And I'm grateful for your insight into how your family and your particular child benefits from an equal access to programming. So thank you. And that's not even my prepared remarks. <laughs> um, I'm concerned about the current impacts of what we call the funding mechanism for charter schools and how expansion of existing charter schools exacerbates those impacts. I kind of felt after the mayor spoke, I could have just said what he said, but I'm good, so I'll be repeating some of those same themes. Here's what concerns me. I'm concerned that the Commonwealth is using an outdated fund funding formula to support our community public schools, which leaves our schools with inadequate and diminishing resources to educate our children, simultaneously forcing these schools to meet increased and expensive requirements. I'm concerned that this dwindling pool of state funds can then also be diverted to fund charter schools, which do not face the same requirements as the community public school. It's a setup for failure. And as I see it, and I know many of us share this perspective, the mechanism robs school districts of needed resources. It undermines their capacity to meet their missions and their families' expectations. And maybe most significantly, it polarizes our communities. I'm concerned about the impact of this mechanism on school districts in the 3rd Hampshire District and throughout the Commonwealth and throughout the Valley and Western Massachusetts and their capacities to sustain programs. The so-called funding mechanism is actually a defunding mechanism for public schools and it's destructive and divisive. We need to do better. We need to ensure that the school funding formula is updated to reflect real costs and allow school districts to create the programs they need to teach our children. We need to protect those funds and we need to especially protect the limited resources they currently receive. We need to ensure that public school guarantees public access, especially in public education. We need to make sure all recipients of public funds are equally subject to the same accountability and scrutiny in the way that they use these funds. If I receive the honor to represent the 3rd Hampshire District on November 6th, which I hope to, I pledge to work with other colleagues, and I see Lindsay Sabadosa is here, so with you, hand in hand, in the House, and to work with my new state senator, Joe Comerford, um, to achieve this for the Commonwealth. Until we do, I cannot support expansion applications for any charter school that would ultimately divert and threaten resources so badly needed by our district schools. I look forward to working together to support our district public schools and to create a process of fairness in funding for education in the Commonwealth for every student. Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Lindsay Sabadosa, a Democratic nominee for state representative for the First Hampshire. afternoon. I had a moment. I didn't know what time it was. I dressed to stand outside in the pouring rain, so my apologies. Um, my name is Lindsay Sabadosa, and I am the Democratic nominee for the um, state representative from the 1st Hampshire District. And I am also the parent of a sixth grader at JFK, a clarinet player. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about this application, because this is not the first time that a uh, charter school, that the Chinese Immersion Charter School, rather, has has applied for an application to expand. In fact, this happened two years ago, and that application was denied. The reasons for that was a lack of diversity in the student population, especially students with disabilities and ELL, and um, that the student population did not reflect the student population of the sending districts. So at the time, DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education wrote, the department strongly encourages the school to delay resubmission in order to identify methods to address the specific reasons individual board members declined to support the school's request. That was 2017. So here we are in 2018, a year later. And the board, this January, said, the, board spe the board's specific concerns have not been addressed. I strongly encourage the school to implement targeted strategies over the next two or three years in order to demonstrate evidence that it has addressed or made effective progress to address the concerns expressed by the board prior to any further expansion request. 
I personally find it worrisome that a school continues to apply for something despite being denied, despite being asked to look into specific issues, and just really demonstrating an unwillingness to do so. And I, I question why that's happening, frankly. I'm very proud to say that in Northampton, three of our city councillors, Councillor um, Bidwell, Shiara, and Nash, are introducing a resolution to opposing a renewed application for expansion of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. And I am very proud to have to have read this resolution in you know, sort of its draft form and to have seen how they've really outlined how a 63% expansion of the Chinese Immersion School is really going to hurt the schools in Northampton. And one of the beautiful things they did is that they showed what we could be using those funds for in this district. And they outlined things. I'm gonna, I made a little list of them, um, such as preschool expansion increasing foreign language instruction, musical education, adding teachers and adjustment counselors, something that we know our schools all need. Adjustment counselors are overworked individuals. Um, so I really look forward to working with Mindy and with Joe um, at the State House to revamp our funding formulas, but we also locally need to make sure that we are holding holding the line against requests like this. Because while we need to work on funding, we also need to figure out a better way for, for charter schools to be funded, because this is not working. I'm not even sure if it's just a question of revamping the formula. I think it is a question of changing how we fund charters. Thank you so much to all of the organizers and to everyone who spoke today, and most especially everyone who just showed up because they love our public schools. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, next up, I'd like to invite Joe Comerford, Democratic nominee for State Senate for Franklin, uh, Hampshire, and Worcester County. Thanks so much, Laura. Uh, thank you to you all. Thank you to the organizers and all of the speakers. I'm very grateful to be here with you. Um, like Lindsay, I am a mom uh, of a Northampton Public School, Jackson Street School student. Uh, he's in fifth grade, Isaiah, and I also, like Lindsay, have a JFK sixth grader. Uh, so I have seen the brilliance of our local public schools, and I'm grateful to be here with so many supporters. I'm also, as Laura said, the Democratic nominee for the Hampshire Franklin Worcester State Senate District. Those are 24 cities and towns. So while we are here in Hampshire County, I am also thinking of the impact of charter schools on Franklin County. You know, I don't have to tell the folks in this room about the current polarization that's happening nationally. And this issue, the issue of charter schools and public schools, has a similar polarizing effect in our Commonwealth, right? So we're, we're almost like the Commonwealth is within this nation where we're pitting families against each other unnecessarily. Right now, I believe that we would all agree, parents, wherever their children go to school, that education, education of our children is critical for our democracy. I believe that my children are best served in the Northampton Public Schools at Jackson Street and, and JFK. But, uh, but regardless of that belief, I think we can all agree and we must agree in the Commonwealth right now that our education is imperative for democracy. And if, you do, if you're not willing to think about it as a de, an issue of democracy, certainly it's also imperative for our local economy, our commonwealth economy, our national economy, to raise up the next generation of citizens for, of, of this great commonwealth, of this great nation. But right now, what we have in terms of charter schools in the commonwealth is the brutality of a zero-sum game, where our, our public schools lose every time we send money to charter schools. And that brutality has to be stopped and it certainly cannot be expanded. So my issue, especially with this current application of the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion School is that it, it came on the heels of a devastating loss that we felt in this last session of the legislature where much needed funding to redress chronic, chronic underfunding of our public schools. It came on the heels of that loss. But then it also, it also then came on the heels of an, an inability right now thus far, and I'm looking forward to working with Mindy and uh, Lindsay on this, of, a, of an inability for us to, to tackle other issues with the way charter schools are currently constituted. So there's, we have, we have in, un, 
we have insufficient funds, and then we have chronic underfunding. David talked about the, Mayor Narkowitz talked about the chronic underfunding of charter mitigation. In Franklin County, they'll tell you that the chronic underfunding of regional transportation is another issue, right? So we take out the money for charter schools where we don't have enough money for base, we don't have enough money for mitigation, we don't have enough money for transportation. So we take it out. But there's more. There's more reasons why I don't support expansion. Uh, and some of these, of course, have already been said. The way currently charter schools are funded, where they have to take money out of city and town budgets. That is absolutely untenable for city and town budgets. Again, that's the brutality of the zero sum. I'm also very concerned about public oversight and transparency. Public funds require public oversight. Right now in the city of Northampton, we elect school committee members, my wife Anne is one of them, to work with our great superintendent and find the best and most accountable and transparent way for our public dollars to be spent. There is no such public oversight or accountability currently with charter schools. Uh, I believe that has, to be, um, that has to be addressed. And then, of course, other people and, and have said beautifully, the, the, the current bifurcated system, right? We have a two-tiered system currently where charter schools are not serving equal numbers of children across race, across ability, across class. So right now, we, we have a two-tier system in the Commonwealth. Expansion of our charter schools will exacerbate that two-tier system. And that's not what we want. That's not the best for our children that either. You know, in charter schools, in public schools, in private schools, if we have this groaning, bifurcated system, we are not raising up citizens who can be the next generation of the leaders. They won't have the full sense, the full measure of what's needed in our Commonwealth or nation. And so, you know, I think about this issue as a net of mutuality, right? Dr. King has talked to us about that, where we're inextricably bound to each other, right? Parents who send their children to public schools are inextricably bound to parents who send their children to charters or other institutions. And I'm, I'm looking to take up this issue to, of course, fight with Lindsay and Mindy for the full funding of our public schools. Of course, that has to be the first thing that we do when we head to the legislature in January, but also to really unpack the, the, the gross inequities and inequalities and the way our charter schools are currently set up and run. And really, again, it, it's for the benefit of all of us. It's in that net of mutuality that we will do that work. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, and finally, um, Aaron Vega had been invited to speak. He couldn't make it um, at the last minute. And so I'd like to invite Devin Sheehan from the Holyoke School Committee to speak. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Mayor Narkowitz, for hosting us here today for this very important uh, press conference and event. Um, so, with Laura mentioned, I'm a member of the Hoyoke School Committee, but I also have the honor of being the president of the Massachusetts Association of School Committees and representing the over 300 uh, school committees that are members of our organization. And, and I come here today and I, I agree with everything that these three fine future legislators uh, have said today, um, that we need reforms. Uh, as you know, Hoyoke is a district in receivership, and the state made that vote a few years ago. Uh, and they also made the same decision in Southbridge just a, maybe two years ago or so. And at the same time when they were saying that Southbridge needs targeted support from the state, and they need this additional assistance, they need to turn this around because these students need uh, extra supports, they allowed another charter school to open up right down the street and pull students right from the Southbridge Public Schools that would help uh, fund the schools and help support the schools and open up for a different opportunity. Well, the opportunity isn't charter schools. Uh, it, as a district that loses close to 12% of their uh, net school spending to charter schools, we need more and we need a fix. And I think that uh, uh, Mindy hit the nail on the head when she says that we need a reform of the foundation budget, and she brought it up, and we need to have those discussions. And they can't be discussions that happen in July when the legislature is minutes away from going out of session. They need to be discussions that happen right on January 1st. Right when our new elected officials take that oath of office, we need to have discussions around charter uh, reimbursement, around fair funding for our public schools. We cannot have an expansion of charter schools in the Commonwealth until we're able to fund our public education. We have many members of our organization that actually support charter schools. There are school members that I talk to that say, do you know what, they are not the worst thing happening in our communities. I personally disagree. 
However, we need local elected officials making the decisions on whether or not charter schools should open or expand in our communities. It should not be a board appointed solely by the governor that says this can happen with no type of oversight. Remember, this board that said now twice no to expand in the Chinese Immersion School is a different board today than it was a year ago, two years ago, or five years ago. So do not sit down on this fight. It could be a different outcome come when this new commissioner makes the decision. You need to write to your board members. The information on the sheet that passed around has the email address of the commissioner. I would encourage you to go on the DESC website Find your board members, call them up, send them emails. Just because they're appointed by the governor doesn't mean they don't represent the citizenry of Massachusetts. They are here to lead our public schools and here to be advocates. So call them up and hold them accountable and say, I've talked to my local elected official, I've talked to my legislature. You are the people that make the decision. Tell them that you don't want an expansion of the charter school. You don't want to see new charter schools opening up in your community until we can fix public education for the hundreds of thousands of students here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Make those phone calls, send those emails, Go out to your communities that have rallies like this and have discussions like this and say, we need to first fight for the students that are living in our communities. As an organization, I'm excited to work with Lindsay and Joe and Mindy as we move forward and we improve education for every student in the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Devin. And thank you all again for being here. I know how busy everyone is, and I really appreciate you all coming together today to stand up for our public schools. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Laura.